How can you train a dog? Paw, paw. How strong is a zip? How can I ride my bike over a bed of nails? How can I join two paper clips together without touching them? Fred, you can't do that. You have to touch them to join them together. You have to. It's absolutely impossible. I think it's worth a bet. 10p? Yeah. yeah. Impossible, they say. 10p's in the middle. Yeah. Here we are. Two paper clips and a piece of paper. You didn't say anything about a piece of paper, Fred. You never asked me. Two paper clips, they are not joined together, are they? No. I'm no. not touching them, am I? No. Watch very carefully. Now ah. they are joined together. How did I do that? Yes, Let me show you how using a bigger bit of paper and a couple of larger paper clips. Fold your sheet of paper in a sort of S shape, a squiggly little shape. One paper clip stick between the first two folds of the paper. Yeah. Second paper clip over the next two folds of the paper there. Okay? Yeah. yeah. And what happens is when you pull the paper at the edges, the clips are forced into each other. Voila! <laughs> that's how you join two paper clips without touching them, and that's how you win yourself 20p. Hmm. Now, how big are you? You mean tall? I'm six feet tall. No, you mean heavy. I'm, I think I'm 11 stone. No, 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 no. I mean how big are you? What volume are you? In litres, perhaps? I don't know. Let's take a simple experiment. Now then, I have two things here made of exactly the same material, both made of metal. Which one do you think is bigger, Fred? Ship. The, the ship? Mm. Why? Because it's taller. What no, about you? It's the box, because it, it takes up more space. Right. Well, um, just come with me to my water research laboratories. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is to weigh both of these items. We'll weigh the block first, and you can see that that weighs about four and a quarter kilograms. Mm. Yes. Well, you're them. And now we'll weigh the ship, and that weighs exactly the same, four and a quarter kilograms. Now, they're both made of exactly the same material. I've got two fish tanks here, both filled to the same level, and to put the block into here first. Now, as I put the block in, you'll notice that it's pushing some of the water out of the fish tank. Now, that's going down through the tube to fill up this beaker. I do exactly the same with the ship. Make sure it goes right in to the fish tank. There it goes. Now, this one has finished dribbling into the jar, so I shall drag that over here. Now, both objects, if you remember, weighed exactly the same. They're made of the same material, and the volume of water they've pushed out is exactly the same, which means that the ship is as big as the block. Neither one is bigger than the other, so you were both wrong. Yeah, but, Carol, the how was, how big are you? Uh -huh. Well, I should do exactly the same experiment with myself. What you do is you fill the bath and you put a mark where the water level is before you get in. And then you get into the bath and, oh, if you can, you just go and put as much of you under the water as you possibly can and then when the water level rises, you put a new mark oh, on the bath get up, and then if you measure the distance between there and there, you can see just how big you are by how much water you've pushed out. Just a minute, there's no water in that bath. Of course there isn't. I get wet. How do you get rid of hiccups? Well, I find standing on my head works for me, uh, but you have to then drink a glass full of water from the wrong side. That works every time, gets rid of hiccups. No, I think jumping up and down on the spot, deep breath, and a cold spoon down the back gives you a no, nice shot. No, no, no. You've got to give someone a shot. You go, Aah! like that. Or you go, Aah! 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 Whoa, whoa. Shock that did. Do you two actually know what hiccups are, though? No idea. No, not really. Quick lesson in anatomy for you. This is a model of the human body. Inside the chest, a pair of lungs. But underneath the lungs is a muscle. 
called the diaphragm. Now, the diaphragm drives your breathing. As that muscle moves up and down, it forces air out of the lungs and draws air back into your lungs. Now, that's when it's working normally. But have you ever had a muscle sort of twitch on the back of your neck? Mm. Or in your eye. In your eyelid, yeah, yeah, that yeah, sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that's called an involuntary muscle spasm, and all it is is a muscle going bananas. Now, the diaphragm can go bananas sometimes, and that's, this is what happens. The diaphragm twitches, and as it twitches, <laughs> Air is moved in and out across the vocal cords, drawn in and out like that, and it slams the vocal cords shut. And that is, in fact, actually the sound a hiccup makes. That's what a hiccup is, an involuntary muscle spasm of your diaphragm. Yeah, 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 That's yeah, what it is. How, How do, you do you get, get rid, rid of, of it? Them? Well, the truth is that most hiccups will go away quite naturally on their own. Uh, unless it is you find that you are hiccuping for a few weeks on the end, go and check it out with the doctor. <laughs> um, and it's whatever works for you, works for you. For some people, standing on the head. For others, it's jumping up and down. And that's how you might get rid of hiccups. Hmm. How do you train a dog? I don't just mean train him to sit and stay. I mean train him to do special things. Let me show you what I mean. Meet a friend of mine. Come on, Graham. Come on, Graham. Come and say how. <laughs> oh, right. come and show us how. And here's another good friend of how, David Manning. How, David? Hello. How could you train Graham to shut that door? Well, it's su surprisingly <laughs> it's simple. Surprisingly yes. simple. Shut it softly, good boy. Good boy, there you are. Good lad. I think the first lesson is essentially rewarding the dog for good behaviour. And it's something you could try at home if you have a dog. First of all, Graham, come here. You'd train the dog to jump. And you'd say, jump, and again, jump. Good boy. And then you'd simply do the same process, but nearer to, for example, a door, round here. Good boy, come down. Sit. Now, jump. You do that three times at home, rewarding the behaviour when it's good, and you'll have trained your dog to shut a door. So with all tricks, then, it's a matter of simple repetition and reward. And reward. There you are. Good boy. Now, I know Graham also helps you with your film work, your work in films. So how could you treat, teach him to help other animals do tricks as well? Well, occasionally, say you have an, uh, an example of a rabbit trying to cross a bridge... Come on, Graham, we're not going out. <laughs> the rabbit will be reluctant to do so until prompted. If you can bring a dog around out of the sight of the camera, hopefully the rabbit will cross the bridge and they'll have the piece of footage they're looking for. Come and show us how. Now, uh, how do you persuade Graham to persuade the rabbit to go over the bridge? Well, hopefully, I've just got to get Graham to approach the rabbit, and the rabbit should, of his own accord, cross over. On you go, Graham. Go on, that works. So Good the rabbit boy. sees Graham, and then he immediately over, scurries across. And hopefully, Graham won't be in shot for the, for the camera. And get his repetition and film. patience. Right, Graham, sit. Shake hands. <laughs> Good boy. That's how you train a dog. Wonderful. How can I ride my bike over a bed of nails? You can't do that. You'll burst your tires. You'll get halfway across and it'll be... Well, I just happen to have a bed of nails with me. And just to prove to you exactly how sharp these nails are, I shall drop an apple onto them. There we are. Sharp nails. Yeah, very sharp. And over here, I have my bicycle. Just put the helmet on. A little bit of safety. And I will proceed to ride this bicycle over it's not going to work of nails it isn't going to work it is it isn't it is just watch oh. wait just listen to this red bang listen <laughs> oh. hey. <laughs> how you did you do that how did you do that well it's because i have some very special bicycle tires now normally Bicycle tyres are made like this. They have a rubber outer case and an inner tube, which is blown up with air. And exactly as you said, Gareth, the, the nail would go through that, burst the inner tube, <laughs> an absolute disaster. But I have solid tyres on my bicycle. Mm -hmm. This is a piece of one of these tyres. Now, these are made from microcellular polyurethane. What's that? It's a uh, plastic full of bubbles, basically. And uh, the nail doesn't go through the tyre and burst anything. It does actually pierce the tyre, but nothing happens. Uh -huh. So it makes it extremely safe. And with these, you can now do away with the old 
bicycle pump. You can do away with a puncture repair kit. They last four times as long as a normal tyre, but eventually, when they wear out, you can recycle them. Here is a tyre I rode earlier, made into pellets, <laughs> <laughs> and it will be made into another bicycle That's tire. a good idea. It's clever. Mm. Do it again. Show us how. I shall proceed to show you how I can ride over a bed of nails. What's the studio yeah. character? <laughs> it's very dangerous, this. Here we go. Go on. Ooh. Hey, brilliant. I thank you. How does John McEnroe appear on an English banknote? He doesn't. It's the royal family, isn't it? Yeah, it's on, the Queen um, yeah, on yeah. an English banknote. Can't Always. argue with that, but John McEnroe appears on a £12.50 note. £12.50? £12.50. Now, I don't happen to have a £12.50 <laughs> note with me, <laughs> but I've got the next best thing. I've got a £10 note which has the Queen on one side and has Charles Dickens on the other. Uh -huh. Yes. I have a £5 note here, which has the Queen on one side, and it has George Stevenson on the other. Yes. Now, if I were to bend my £5 note in half, half of £5 is £2.50. Yes. And if I were to join that to my £10 note, I'd have £12.50, wouldn't <laughs> I? <laughs> right. And if half the Queen's face goes over half of George Stevenson's face, what do I have? A little tennis player. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how John McEnroe appears on an English banknote. You can't be serious. <laughs> how um, how strong is a zip? Not very strong in my experience. No, it isn't. It just holds breaking. two bits of material yes. together, doesn't it? That's about well, it. Have you ever considered the humble zip? No. A marvellous invention, really, Fred, really. Um, uh, about 100 years old, designed by an American engineer called Whitcomb Judson. We use them these days for doing up anoraks, for um, closing bags, um, tent doors, everything. everything. Yeah, mm. pretty useful. All the but time. The, the zip was actually a big flop when it was first introduced. It wasn't until 1918 when the US Navy ordered 10,000 of them for flying suits that it actually become popular. But how does a zip work? Well, I can show you with this zip here because I have a zip with a transparent slider. Mm -hmm. So if I turn it round, you can see exactly how the zip functions. Now then, it is in fact two rows of interlocking teeth. There they are. Now, um, this slider is wide at the top and narrow at the bottom. And as you draw the slider up the teeth like that, what actually happens is the teeth are forced together. Can you see that? They are forced yeah. to yes. join at the bottom there and lock quite solidly at the bottom. Now, the job of undoing the zip is all down to this wedge at the top here. Can you see this wedge? And what that wedge does is force the two rows of teeth apart, like that. And that's how a zip works, opening and closing, with the use of that marvellous slider. Yeah, but how strong is a zip was that, the how, was wasn't the it? How, how yeah. strong how is strong it? Is OK, it? well, it takes a wedge and a slider to separate the zip, but can you pull a zip apart like that? Zip this way and I'll show you. Now, okay. I have a zip here, right? Yes. Which is attached to a pair of cars, OK? Yes. Now, if these two cars fail to pull this zip apart, you will have to admit that a zip is a very strong thing. Yes, if. only if they fail. Precisely. <laughs> Carol, Fred, yes. go to your cars. OK. okay. Go to your car. straight apart. Put your seatbelts on. Start your engines. Starting engines. Start it. Put the cars in gear. Cars in gear. In gear. Release the handbrake on my mark and go! Apart. That's how strong a zip is, and that's how. Oh, 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 no! Oh, oh. Carol, turn, watch out! It was never like this at Silverstone.